Free Fighter 2 or uh, Virtual Fighter? I would say. Those are violent. Okay, yeah, violent. Low bite. Yeah, I mean, you're punching. Well, it's like, it's like violence. Like, all right, let's play violence with blood. Okay. I do. Yeah, so I Oh, this. All right, well, my first video, my video game of blood would be Jurassic Park Warpath. Punch right there. Hunter's Reckoning. So, PlayStation had their TGS keynote last night. I don't know if anybody watched it or if anybody who cares. It sounded so boring. The translator? Well, it did a pretty good job. Are you going to install it? Yeah. Are you going to install it? They showed deep down. It looks like an HD version of Dark Souls, I want to say. So, so nobody died by a suicide bomb 
in that camp. Thank you. In my game. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of Pikmin were eaten by this weird, have you guys ever seen those like cush balls that have, it's just a plastic ball that has like, little strands of rubbery stuff and it just squishes around? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So it's one of those with like four legs. Yeah, it's kind of like a daddy long legs. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they, they're really tall and they stomp around a lot, and they shake a lot. And they're really hard to fight because they're usually in a space that like has a split area, either between two two sections of the map, or like a water and a dry area. So you can't just keep throwing Pikmin indiscriminately up there because they might drown, or you know they might end up in an area where you're not able to reach them and have to sit there and wait to get smashed. When are we gonna do this? <laughs> I did get Rayman Legends. Um, I, it's amazing. It's fantastic. I mean, we could, Tyler. Um, Rain Man Legends is a fantastic game. Um, I have it for the Wii U. And I, I intended to play it with my girlfriend because that was one of the first games that she played as Rain Man Origins. And you know, we really had a great time playing that together. The only problem is that um, on the Wii U, that somebody has to play on the gamepad and then the, the other players play it. And, which, is, which is cool, and I like it. The levels are designed to make the most of it. But then, when I go into, when I play as Murphy, the, the game pack character, there are sections where you have to play as him. And my girlfriend's by herself, and, you know, whereas before, one of us could die, and it wouldn't matter, and, you know, we just float around and come back with no lives or anything. The Murphy character can't save someone that's died, and they, I don't know. It's much more challenging. Previous Rain Man games. Uh, but there, there's a Black Betty level where, where a little goblin, little goblins like make squeaking sounds to the tune of Black Betty. And there's an Eye of the Tiger level where there's a Mariachi Eye of the Tiger. It's pretty great. Holy God. So I'm getting tired of talking. Tony, what's up? I did not get the wonderful one on one. No, I, I bought Earthbound and Rain Man Legends. Earthbound. Uh, it, it is a re-release of the Super Nintendo classic that was previously inaccessible because of weird copyrights on the music. But it was released for the Wii Virtual Console. That game is crazy. <laughs> they, they do still have the cra crazy fetus semi-abortion-y end boss. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to ruin this for anyone, so so, so, spo so spoilers, cover your ears, black out YouTube if you don't want to know what happens at the end of Earth now. So uh, Gygus, Gygus being the evil of the Lord, comes back, he's too powerful even like when he just comes back. He's too powerful for Ness and his friends to defeat him. N Ness and his friends fail to defeat Gygus, and they realize the only way to defeat him is to go back in time to a point where he's weak enough to be defeated. It turns out the only point in time where Gygus was weak enough to be defeated was when he was a, a fetus. So it's never like outright said that what you're doing is killing a fetus, Gygus. But the level is shaped like uh, an ortho, what do they call it? Like an orthoscopic diagram of a woman's reproductive system. There's like fallopian tube corridors and stuff like that. And yeah, you're, you're, that's what happens at the end. So uh, you can uncover your ears if, if, uh, if you're avoiding spoilers. I'm not talking about it anymore. But it is absolutely crazy. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing game. It's got this really weird, dark sense of humor. I played it for all two hours, and there's like there's child abuse, and, and there's like deadbeat dads that, that you only talk to on the phone. <laughs> Which is a common theme in Nintendo games. Like, I don't know if you noticed that. Your dad is. Your dad's either not there, or he's, he's on the phone. He's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? I put some money in your account. Here. I give you some money. <laughs> yeah, apparently, according to Porky, Porky's, Porky's father lent your, lent your dead beat that $100,000 loan. <laughs> your dad never paid it back. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. All right, so what do you guys... 
Chris is done plugging his Nintendo fanboy games. Let's. No, I, I don't. Oh, actually, has anybody watched any good anime lately? No? Yes. Yes? yes? What'd you watch? Punch mad. Uh, I'm waiting for the image to pop up, but it probably never happened. But um, 
essentially storyboards is what happens after scripting and before formal animations or before you lay down the pencils or before you actually start literally designing the level. Storyboards is um, it is essentially like that weird middle point in which you, ideas, the media, is sort of drafted out in a more formal way. Um, scripting only covers so much. It covers what ideas are there. It covers what's going to happen, but it doesn't cover little minute things like visual cues, the sound, the timing, and the things that you will literally be presenting to the audience before things, I mean, before, before you know, before it like literally hits the screen. Like, um, so, so it, it's been, it, it's a really important process to sort of like very informally, very quickly, actually literally very quickly, just like hash all these things out, hash all the ideas and the finer parts of it in, in, in a skeletal form. Um, there's different ways of doing it. Um, who here is interested in using this for, I mean, what's, what's, what's the media everyone's working on currently, video games? So video games. Okay, so uh, okay, so I'll run through what happens uh, literally in in the uh, development cycle because we've done that quite a bit. Um, so there's usually the ideas that I mean uh, I, I'm working on a startup game myself with a bunch of other people. Uh, August Vendor, you might know, came from DDG as like the president. So uh, we're work, um, we're we're doing a thing. I don't know what that'd be or when it'll happen, but we're doing it. It's, it's, you know, it's... It sounds weird. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, um, okay, so in a Bedouin cycle, we usually start with stuff like uh, we literally do create the, the document where we just type everything out, type down all the, uh, all the, all the stuff we need in the game, the assets, the story, what's going to happen, the rules. That's all being written out in DDG, but what storyboards cover is quite literally how these elements are going to be conveyed. Hey. Starting from how... Ooh! That's going to be for me to use. Um, so, starting from uh, what's going to happen in the, at the start screen. How even start screens have storyboards onto themselves, like it's going to start with a little with, with a little cube, and it's going to roll around, and it's going to form a letter N, and then it's going to turn sideways, and it's going to make fun of your mother. Um, that was Nintendo 64, yes. So, or GameCube, yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's, that, that's storyboarding. It's a very, it's very important, and it's very, like, it, it's, it's this thing that just sort that sort of needs to happen before anyone even attempts making like formal assets for certain things because the idea of skipping that step actually leads to more mistakes and more work being done in the long run. Because what happens if uh, there's this one idea you had and it looked really cool, um, but it felt like it would have been better if if say like uh, a certain event happened before this event was shown to you and all that, storyboards could have handled that because you sort of got a big picture of everything. In fact, a lot of little big pictures of everything. So yeah, that image right there actually is uh, from Up. And before 3D models and before the uh, colors and the light and the shaders even kick into place, it's literally how that character looks, what expressions they're making, and what timing it's all going to happen. Like, there's some repeating uh, frames right here where it feels like, oh, he's dragging him up, and he's taking him to this grass, and there's just an empty scene of the grass. But why, why make an empty scene of the grass, right? But it's, it's important to have these negative spaces up here to say that, oh, he's left it, or oh, he's passed, you know? Um, and, and, and usually you start from, like, point A, to point B, and then you sort of, huh? Yeah, sorry. From point A to point B, and and usually you, you start to fill in little bits, little pieces in the middle of things. Um, when, when animation tweens occur, actually, 
you normally uh, before you before you see S Capcom or SNK lay on the thick amounts of frames to do a punch motion, you, the first thing you realize is that they draw this first, and then they draw this first, and everything in between just sort of gets timed or uh, or designed out in storyboard. And the things you can do in storyboard are actually very vast, but the first but the few rules you got to keep in mind is you got to do it fast. You got to do it simple. All the elements need to be there, right? Or, or rather, the lack of the lack of uh, elements need to be there, right? The only, only the all, all the most important things need to be visible. Is like this scene is about this kid asking this. Oh, oh, wait, she, who's? Oh yeah, this girl trying to get in this club and she takes off her helmet. And it was okay, that was a sad scene. Who's seen up? This guy. This guy. Yeah. Here. Yeah, that part was the cutest fucking part, and that is a storyboard for it. What were you, I mean, it went from that to what you saw in the theaters, and it was amazing. And normally, that all starts in these little parts right here. If, oh, sorry. A laser pointing? No. Okay. Okay. I've always been wanting to do a thing. <laughs> so that's that's they're always going to be there. Uh, okay. I, I'm I'm not getting used to this. So that, that's Ellie. She's get, um, giving him the badge of courage. I forget what this was all for. I mean, they had a little fan club about uh, adventuring. Yeah. So yeah, the adventure club. She was like, "You gotta join my club so now." That was literally this. This all accounts for. Quite possibly two minutes, one minute of animation, but if you know, but it's been said that the people in who are working on Pixar, who was animating that thing, didn't actually get to see the full movie until it came out on big screen. The reason for that was they literally had 100 computers lined up to just render all these frames, and because the time for that was so tight. The time it took to render all those frames, put them together, and put them on the big screen literally happened in one go. So none of that stuff they could have figured out when they were in, in the production room. They had to figure it out here in storyboards, and they had to figure it out in what little um, rendering things, that, in what little the models they actually got to see. So that was a, and this up was like one of those really insane acts of uh, of daring, to be fair. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so for video games, um, I was gonna do like some rules. So, back to the rules of storyboarding. The things you gotta know is what medium are you doing it for, right? Once you figure that out, you, the, the first thing you realize is what's the screen size for the thing you're doing it for, or what's the dimensions you're working with. For comics, you're either dealing with um, cute long triangle and long rectangles with a bunch of squares in them dictating the action, or if you're doing animations, it's all just frames like these that are exactly sized like the like the like the, like the film screen. Now these aren't. This isn't a coincidence, right? So you gotta work. The first thing you gotta realize is that you gotta box everything in exactly the size that you're working. With. Then after that, you're good to go. You, you literally just gotta. Blah, blah, blah. Normally, there would be things like writing here. He says a thing, or he would. There would be like little cues, like an arrow here saying his eyes shift this way, or there would be like birds coming this way, and things like that. That's the kind of stuff that happens in animation cues. For video games, you gotta figure out like, okay, let's what's what's a genre of game that that. that yeah, a fairly simple genre of game that you could probably would require sport, but you didn't need sport. Beat em ups? Yes. Yeah. First person? Yeah. That could work. That could work. Uh, oh, what's, a, what's, what's a scene in a. Um, Last of Us was one. Last of Us was a good one. Okay, so let, let's just try Last of Us. Let's do those, those takedown scenes, right? Um, there would be a. 
a point in which a guy grabs onto Joel, and obviously the, the game takes, it's like a, it's one of those survival games where the guy is on this side on the screen and everything else is happening on the left side of the screen, and I used to fuck with that one for a while. Uh, but, so let's start with that. You're, you're literally dealing with a storyboard in which a guy starts here, and say a zombie comes here, grabs him, and then you see, you can take into, the thing is you can take into account with uh, storyboards is on this scene, this, this is the game in this neutral position. In this scene, it could be the case of when Joel gets um, 